So the next slide is going to be about uh, Biogen or Biogen, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Biogen was established in 1978. And uh, after that, it was growing by mostly acquiring or merging with other companies. And on the right hand side of the slide, you can see that uh, Biogen was founded in 97. Then it was uh, like merged with IDEC Pharmaceutical. Okay, and the name was Biogen IDEC. And after that, it's uh, in 2006, it's Fuma Farm. And after that, Tonics, and after that, Convergence Pharmaceutical, right? And then 2000, it was Nightstar Therapeutical. So the company is growing by acquiring other businesses. Now, uh, why it is important to know what the business is doing like that? So imagine that uh, you don't have your own research and development department. Now, e and you have certain amount of drugs, and you understand that in the future, those drugs are going to, like patents are going to expire, and you have nothing to sell you, right? Your profitability will drop down. But if you keep buying other businesses which have something in their pipelines, so you're kind of solving this problem. And uh, very often uh, companies like in that particular field, bigger companies, what they do, instead of risking uh, themselves and instead of developing and spending like billions of dollars on research and development, what they do, they watch other smaller companies and uh, when those companies already start showing all those clinical studies and et cetera, and they kind of understand that that company is on the final stage of uh, like, I mean, approving their drug, some bigger companies like Pfizer, Biogen and other companies, what they do, they come and buy them off completely, 100%. And usually at that particular moment, you can buy that company is very, very at a cheaper price because they don't manufacture anything. They don't have this product in the pipeline. So they buy before, but they're risking on the, the last payments which they have to make uh, to the doctors and to the like clinical studies in the last particular year, right? Even it's the most expensive, but still they don't pay the whole 15 years of um, research and development. Now, Biogen engage in the discovery, development, manufacture and sell of pharmaceutical products uh, worldwide. I think it has an Australian representation in Europe. And um, actually it was established in Geneva eventually. So Geneva, it's uh, Europe as well. And uh, after that, now what they deal in majority of focus is cancer, autoimmune uh, disease, inflammatory diseases, and neurological disease. And probably some of them, you know, it's uh, not Hodgkin's lymphoma and multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's and rheumatoid arthritis. And um, majority of these diseases there, if you go back, let's we'll say 50 years ago, um, for example, I, I, when I was studying medicine personally, if you don't know, my first qualification is medical doctor and I remember when I was studying and we discussing multiple sclerosis our doctors were saying that uh, they didn't see even one patient within their life uh, like while they were working as a doctor and uh, now I know so many people with multiple sclerosis so for whatever reason amount of people who have this disease now increased significantly okay and you know that previously cancer uh, was considered like a disease for older people like 60 plus a lot of now people like young guys children they have these diseases okay so majority of those diseases they become younger it's first thing secondly uh, we live longer okay so if we live longer instead of dying at 50 years of age right we live until 90 years of age so the chance that we're getting something like that okay we are not getting some somebody is getting like uh, diseases like that it's much higher right so and uh, there is a lot of business in this particular field, okay? Especially with as gamer, because currently there is no even one drug which is approved by FDA, which can be tr like specifically treating uh, as gamer. Okay. Now guys, if you wanna read more about uh, Biogen, I definitely recommend you to go to their website. It's uh, biogen.com, okay? And uh, there is a lot of information there. So at the moment, I'm showing just uh, partly uh, that information. And also you can go, if you want to read a history, you go to Wikipedia or Investopedia and re read about those companies as well. Now, what I want to show before we go to financial areas, 
I want to show you what happens right now with uh, beer again, right? So 30 drugs in its pipeline. And just a few minutes ago, I told you that it's very important to know if the company has something to uh, like launch in the future. Now we can see that 30 companies in the pipeline, some of them just initial stage, okay? This is very, very initial stage. So it's like a laboratory, in, like I mean, research. Okay, but some of them uh, stage two, and we can see some of them in the final stage. Okay, and uh, they are ready to be approved or disapproved by FDA within uh, next six or 12 months. Okay, which is for us important to know because we know if uh, they would be introduced to the market, those drugs, the profitability of this particular company uh, will grow straight away. Uh, uh, that's again, this is this information I took from slides of uh, the last quarterly report of this specific company. And that's what they're saying that clinical programs 30, new clinical programs uh, were launched since uh, 2017. Okay. Programs in phase three, eight, okay. Mid to late stage uh, expected by the end of 2021, six, okay. And uh, uh, business deals since 2000, including recent collaboration with Denali. Because uh, BGN, they work not only they sell in dollar drugs, but also they have joint ventures with other uh, businesses, okay, manufacturers. So if you want to see what kind of uh, diseases and what kind of medication they're developing, you can go to their slides and uh, have a look at more details. They describe and it's pretty, pretty good. Now, and they're saying that uh, why they are focusing now on neuroscience, specifically on its gamer, as gamer, right? Because it's cause uh, of one disability globally at the moment. When people are losing their mind, they don't remember where they live, who they are, what they do. They kind of physically sometimes fit and pretty good, but mentally they're gone completely. And at the moment it's a uh, cause of disability number one. And uh, you understand how many, like the market is huge. So if they develop this drug and they get approval for the specific drug, um, the business, like, I mean, will move quite a lot. Okay. And of course, the cause of the death worldwide, number two. I presume the first one, is uh, cancer, okay? Now, uh, and uh, that's what they expect. They are saying that yesterday they worked with multiple sclerosis. Today they worked um, like all this uh, inflammatory diseases as well are working and look, they are going to increase more and more areas where they're going to work with in the future. So why, why am I showing those slides guys? In order to, uh, kind of show that the company is looking in the future. Some businesses, they created something and they're happy with that and they're selling this product and uh, they make it so an amount of pro uh, like uh, profitability, keep investors happy, but they're not thinking what they're going to do in the future. They're not thinking about growing, they, uh, growth. They're not thinking about expanding. Begin is different, okay? Begin is definitely put in their mind because this slides again from their quarterly report. So managers are telling us what they're planning to do. Okay, it's not my invitation and uh, thinking of what they're going to do. This is the company itself telling us what they're planning to do in the future. All right, this is generally about B again. Okay, uh, what they do as a business. And uh, it's always good to know the product, but remember product is product. Okay, but for us as investors, it's very important how much money we make, okay? When you sell this product, how much money you make? Do you make money or not? Because like uh, a lot of people say, oh, I can make much better product. Yes, you can make much better product, but will you be able to sell it with a profit? Okay, so let's have a look at um, value line report. Again, guys, for those who uh, don't know, I'm using value line. Value line is a analytical company which is, exists from 1922. I think one, so it's nearly 1923. It started during the crisis in the uh, United States. And the main reason was to provide unbiased information about the companies in order for investors know what to do. So this is a not propaganda of those particular businesses. It's an analytical company, which buys 
uh, reports from SEC, Security Exchange Commission, or sorry, whatever company reporting, and after that combines it in a, this very, very useful uh, uh, kind of uh, form, uh, which we can see straight away several reads. So let's have a look. First of all, uh, just a second, I move it's a bit higher. So what we can see here. So uh, when the report was done, and I think it was uh, just look at the pro uh, it's second of October, so it's what two months old, right? Uh, they they introduced this report every quarter. Now what we can see the price was two hundred and sixty eight dollars at the moment. The price is two hundred and forty three dollars, so it's twenty five dollars less. Now <clears throat> the P ratio at that time was eight. At the moment it's ba like basically it's a bit lower, seven point uh, nine or like uh, seven point something there. Okay, then what we can see that the price moved. Now, uh, straight away, before we even look at technical analysis, I'm going to show you uh, how volatile this company is. Look, for example, if you go for one year, this is a minimum price during that year, and this is a maximum price during that year. And what that's what we can see, $140 and like nearly $300. So it's more than 100% move from 140 to uh, 300. Next year, it was from 270 to 360, right? So it's $90. On that, it's about 30% more. 250 to 480. So it's again, what, uh, nearly 90% more. So every year, a uh, company has a huge volatility. So it's kind of falls very low and then it grows very high. Now, if you even buy this company or shares of this company only once a year and hold it, it just make your calculations yourself. Just think, if you buy for 139 here in 2013 and then sell for 361 in 2014, right? How much money you make? Then you wait until it collapses to 150, then you buy it and then you sell for 330 next year. So if you do one trade a year, uh, calculate how much money you're going to make. Okay. The question is, when is that time when to buy? And is it this time right now? Now, which we can use and buy this company and then sit for the next year and then we'll sell it when, until it uh, gets high. Now, okay, this is the price and the price is just representation of what happens within the company and also um, based on emotions which surround the company. Okay, if some good news, the price goes up. If some bad news, the price goes down. Now let's have a look generally what happens on the sale. So if we take one share of the company and see how much money companies sell per share, okay, so how many products they sell. And uh, we can see from 2010, and uh, $18 per share, then $20, then $23, $29, $41, $49, $52, $53, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $120, $130, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $
at this particular price, at a low price, they understand that is, uh, instead of investing in some kind of different businesses, they understand that they are good business, so they invest in themselves, so they buy and often market shares, which are cheap. And can you imagine if before 174 million shares was on the market this year, it's only 155. And just now, uh, last um, report which they had, they announced a, a, another $5 billion buyback, so which is huge, okay, at this particular price. So, you know, even the profit for the whole company is going to stay on the same level because they are buying back shares, amount of investors is going to be reduced and profitability per share is going to grow. So, and of course, the uh, price of that particular share will grow as well. So it's kind of a good thing when company does like that, especially if the price for this uh, stock is cheap, okay? Now, unfortunately, company doesn't pay any dividends. So they decided that it's much better for them to put money into their own business instead of giving to the investors. Because if they give it to you, to us, right? So we got this cash, we have to pay straight away the tax. And after that, that we have to think, where do we have to buy again? Maybe we'll go and buy by Jim again. So instead of that, so they just eliminated. They have ideas where to put them, like our money, whatever they're making, and uh, they're reinvesting in their business. Now, uh, another thing which is very important. So we look at the business. So business, we know it's growing, okay? Another parameter is very important is debt, debt level. So we can see that here it was $1 billion of dollar of debt, okay, until uh, 2014, even uh, 2015, uh, reduced to, oh, it's actually jumped here, $6 billion. Now, why do you think company borrows so much money? Okay. The main reason is because they uh, bought another business. You see the profitability here uh, increased as well. So it jumped from $29 to $41 and from $7 to $12 profit. So that's why they acquire the debt in order to generate this additional profit. And actually, let's have a look how much profit increased. It was $1.8 billion and this is $3.5 billion. So it's like doubled. So the question is, is it a good uh, thing to borrow $6 billion in order to start making every year additional $1.8 billion? I presume kind of the answer is obvious. Okay. Now, but uh, then we can see a bit of reduction of this debt. And this year, the debt is increased again. So $7.4 billion, uh, kind of from $4.4 billion. So the company is uh, uh, borrowing money. Now, the question is, can they manage this? that level of debt, okay? It seems like $7 billion is quite a lot. Now, first of all, the capitalization of the company is $42 billion. So, uh, in general, if you look at this level of debt and capitalization, it's roughly 14%. Now, if we look at their profit, net profit, so net profit is the money which we kind of uh, already have after paying everything, all expenses, okay? Just pure cash. And uh, that's how much money we have, $5.2 billion. So if they have seven, billion dollars in, in debt and every year they are paying making five billion dollars the question is can this manage this debt they would be able to pay this debt within the next one and a half year that's one thing secondly uh what we always keep an eye how much cash they have and look uh in 2018 they have 3.5 billion dollars in cash 3.5 billion in 2019 now they have 4.3 billion dollars in cash now if we look at current assets which are 8.4 nearly 8.5 billion dollars and current liabilities which they have to pay to their suppliers right to their employees and etc and it 3.4 billion dollars so they have a surplus of 5 billion dollars here so guys even if they have the 7 billion dollars in debt they have cash available 5 billion dollars so they can cover this uh, debt pretty easily. The only question we have to ask, is it a wise thing to do? Okay, yes, they probably can cover the debt, but in this case, would, would they be able to buy back their own shares at the cheaper price? Probably not. Now, what is better? To pay the debt, which is probably now around three, four percent corporate debt, maybe even uh, less if you negotiate it where, well, or let's have a look how much money they make on the capital employed. Okay, so if return on total capital, so 
33%. So they can give back their debt and save maybe three to 5% on interest, or they can reinvest it back into their business and make 33% uh, on that. So which is better? I presume you understand, right? So it's much better to reinvest in the business which has much bigger profitability in this particular case. Now the margin is pretty good. Uh, trading margin 54% last year, and net profit margin 41% uh, next year. So great, okay, fantastic company. Uh, this, uh, what we kind of analyzed the quality of the business. The next thing we need to look, okay, the business is good, but is it cheap or is it expensive? Is the price which we are going to see now on the market uh, worthwhile to kind of explore more or maybe it's too high and we have to stay away from that company now fundamentally how we assess it i already told you we look at price union ratio we evaluate it from the point how much company uh, is making okay and uh, how much times more the prices okay price union ratio and uh, because the company uh, like their profit changes every year so we have to adjust and look at this particular ratio and let's have a look here is the average uh, price in ratio annually. So because during the year, the, the earnings is exactly the same, but the price moves quite a lot. So average, that's what we can see here it was 14, 18, 23, 27, 25, 23. <clears throat> and for the last few years, it's kind of dropped down. Okay, and we can see it, last year it was 8.4 times and now it's less than eight. So if we uh, kind of look when this like in the past history we understand that the price right now is the cheapest ever okay compared to this price in races okay it's average probably during that particular year 2019 maybe at some point p ratio was six and sometimes it was ten and average was eight okay so uh, um, if we want to calculate it more in more details so we have to take the loss price and then divide it by the earnings and that's how we get a lowest PE ratio which we are going to do in a few minutes okay now uh, another thing which i wanted to show you the uh, growth rate uh, you already saw that the company is growing uh, that's the rate of their growth for the last 10 years 17 percent in sales and 24 percent in earnings Within the last five years, they 17% in sales and 22% in earnings. Although, for the, whatever reason, they uh, telling us that uh, their, their growth rate is going to be slower, 9% and 7%. And when the company tells you that they're going to slow down their growth rate, so what do you think uh, happens with the price? Is it staying on the same level, keep growing or falling down? down yes correct so when company tells that even the earnings are great and everything now the question is are they correct or not you know there are some people who under promise and over deliver and there are some people who over promise and then under deliver who do you prefer to deal with people who under promise and over deliver or people who over promise and under deliver I presume you know, everyone wants to deal with people who promise and deliver exactly what they promise, but out of these guys who uh, promise something. Uh, look, earnings predictability in their case, 75%. <clears throat> it means that seven times out of 10, they exact on how much they're making. Uh, three times or two and a half times, they're missing it. Okay, so it means that they're not correct on uh, their promise but the question is they over delivered or under delivered in order to look at this uh, what i do i go to the company called uh, just a second estimize and uh, blue and uh, black dots they show us consensus or expectations based on what company promised okay and uh, Look where the green dot. The green dot, like at least for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine quarters, it's higher. So nine times the company made more money than they uh, promised or projected. 
Okay, so this is kind of the guy who under promise and over deliver. So that's why when you kind of expect that they're telling you something and then the price already collapsed because of that news. Uh, personally, I like those companies because all the prices already include always that news. So, and even if the company is staying the same, whatever they already told us previously, the price won't go down. But if they tell it that it's better, the price is going to increase and move up. Uh, high. So uh, let's have a look at uh, what else we can see here. Uh, basically, I already told you that current focus is on not Hodgkin's lymphoma, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, this is kind of drugs they are developing. Research and development, 16% of sales. Uh, that's how much money they spent there. Okay. And uh, you can see that joint business is 15%, products, they own products 80%, and royalties 5%. That's what they receive. 4,200 4, employees. Okay. And these are the big, biggest companies which own uh, part of this business. Now, <clears throat> What happened to this company, and uh, we're going to look at this uh, recently, FDA, uh, nobody expected, by the way, that they're going to, uh, they have this preliminary uh, application into FDA, and FDA requested more information. And as a result, the price of Biogen collapsed quite a lot, because people, some people expected that they're going to get go ahead, okay? and like sell this drug. They expected that they again will get five year license in order to sell it. And after that already, if the product is good for five years, they're going to extend for for longer period of time. But government didn't give this five year uh, and they requested uh, more information from clinical studies in order to approve this drug. And the next uh, similar kind of uh, decision would be made only in March. Okay, so it's we have one, two, three, four, four, four three and a half, four months uh, when we don't have any this particular news about by again. So the company is not going to jump up or down. Okay, this is uh, case. Now, what Value Line says, you can read about it in more details yourself. And we're going to put a value line research in our club membership platform. Guys, the only thing is for those members who are member with our club, they have access to that platform. Unfortunately, if you're just a visitor for today's masterclass, we invited you and you didn't pay for this anything. Yeah, so you, you're you not able to get this value line report, unfortunately. Okay, now uh, what value line tells us without this timely stock will move much until FDA providers new regarding this is the drug which uh, kind of solving Alzheimer disease. Okay, interest investors should plan their strategies on the potential outcome of this key date. In the worst case scenario, we don't expect FDA to reject uh, this drug out of hand, but simply to ask for more data. Uh, there is a great deal of demand out there on an effective therapy for this awful disease. And basically, a very Value line, if we go back to previous slide, we can see value line has their own projection where the company is going to be in the future. And look, current price was like the price when uh, analyst uh, was analyzing this company was $2 dollars <clears throat> And that's what their projection, 365 to $545 within the next three to five year period. Although, they have other projections, which is for eight months, and they have this fluctuation from 180 to 430, average 300. Okay, so it's, it's uh, the lowest part is below the current price, whereas the highest part is like double of what we have right now. Okay, not the double, but about 90.